Hi. Welcome to our channel. My name is Ally, working as product representative at Godaso. As we know an online meat ordering and delivery system having five deliverables. Admin panel or dashboard, store manager or vendor app, delivery agent or partner app, customer app, software for POS. We will cover each deliverables in a new video, each video will explain the core features and functionalities of deliverables. This video will help you to understand that how you can set up an admin panel or dashboard for an online meat ordering and delivery app. Without any further delay, let's continue with an admin panel. After the login, you will redirect to this dashboard. Here, you can see the first section that gives you the details about the total registered users, total active orders, total active stores, and total active offers. And just below this section, you can find the total number of orders received in a year. Like you have received 21 orders in October, 18 in the December and so on. Here, on the right side you can see the revenue graph for a year. Like you have received a zero revenue in September month, $3,996 in October, and for December it was $12,396. Just below these sections, now you can see the details of recent 5 orders with an order ID, order status, customer name, and cost of the orders. On the right side, you can see the details of 5 new users who had recently signed up with your online meet app. Now we have list of top users, using this you can easily find the users whom are using your services more. On the right side, we have list of tasks for the delivery agents, here you can see all the allocated tasks for an appropriate months. After the dashboard, we have an orders section. Here, by default you will see all the active orders in a list. You can change the list of orders according to the status, for this you can click on tabs named Pending Orders, Accepted Orders, Ready Orders, Completed Orders, Cancelled Orders and Failed Orders. You can click on these tabs and order list will be updated according to the status. You can also filter the orders according to the store names, customer names, order type, delivery type, and find all the orders with pending payments as well. For generating an invoice, we can click on any specific order ID. Here, on the top we can see the View Invoice button. We can click on it and find the options like Thermal Invoice or A4 Invoice for print. Now you can generate and print the invoice accordingly. Here, on the right section, you can see the options for Cancel Order and Complete Forcefully. Being an owner, you can cancel the meat order for any reason and also complete it as per the requirement. Now, we can see all the ordered product details with pricing and taxes. On the right side, you can see the customer details, store details and payment details. You can also see the order summary with an order type and delivery type. Here, order type is store pickup so you can't find the delivery agent details along with this order. Now after the successful pickup, you can receive the payment from the customer and mark it as received by clicking on receive payment button. If customer wants to update any order details information, then you can add the notes for the store manager or vendor. You can also communicate with the customers directly by sending messages to them using an inbuilt chat box. Let me show you one more order with the order type as delivery. Now you can see that all the details are similar except delivery task and driver details. Under driver details, you can assign the driver to this particular order manually or automatically. This is all about the orders section. After the orders let's go to the customers section. Here, you can see the list of all the customers whom are using your app or website for online meat ordering. Now, if we will click on any customer then we can find all the orders that are generated by them, see the list of all addresses where customer wants to receive an order, and can also see the earned wallet points that had received by them. In case, if you have received an online payment for an order, another customer or you had cancelled the order then you can credit the wallet points for customer's future use. And during cash on delivery, customer is unable to pay the order money then you can debit the wallet points as well. Here, you can add the documents of a customer as per business requirement. If your customers don't know how to sign up on app then you can also create their account by clicking on plus icon. Now, you can fill the details of the customer like name, email, password and phone number. After filling the details, you can click on create button to add customer profile in app. After the customers, we have drivers section. If you want to add a new driver then you can click on the plus icon and fill the basic details like name, email, phone, password and service fee. After creating an account for driver, 
you can share the login details with them. Here, we can see the list of all the drivers whom are associated with your meat business. Like customers, you can also find the relevant details for each driver as well. Now we can click on the driver to see the list of all the tasks, wallet points and also see the list of required documents like driving license etc. You can add the essential legal documents like medical insurance, vehicle insurance and registration certificate etc. in dashboard. Here, in the map view you can track the real-time location of a delivery agent as well. After the drivers we have map view section. This is a very important section of a dashboard. Using this toggle button, you can show or hide all the outlets or stores. Here, you can see all the yellow flags that are representing the butcher stores and meat shops. On the right side, we can slide the list of all the ongoing tasks and also track the location by clicking on each one. Here, you can see the list of all the drivers or delivery agents associated with an app. You can also filter the drivers according to their availability status like in transit, idle, and offline. After the map view, we have stores list. You can add the new store by click on the plus icon. Here, you can enter the basic details like name of the store, phone number, address, map location, commission, and choose the branches accordingly. After that you can add the geofence area location where your store can provide the meat delivery service. You can also set the delivery type and order type setting as per your business requirement. And by filling the packaging time field, you can add the new store. To see the complete store details, we can click on any store. Here, you can see all the orders that are associated with that store, and also see the wallet points earned by a store. We can also maintain the documents for a specific store this may include food safety license, shop registration certificate and manager docs like medical insurance, residency proof, etc. in a dashboard. Here, on the left side we are getting an edit icon but initially you will get the plus icon to add the manager details. You can update the store details as per your business requirement like store availability, you can turn off the store availability from the app using this toggle button. Apart from this, you can turn on the featured toggle button to show the store on the top in the list. Here, on the left side you can manage the tags, these tags will help your customer to find the store on the app. And if you has changed the location of the store then you can update it as well. We can filter the stores according to the active status, branches, and availability status. You can also change the availability status from the list view as well. Here, on the second number we have reviews. You can see all the reviews for your all stores in a list view. You can filter the reviews according to the store name and customer name. By default all the reviews visibility will remain off on the app. You can delete the inappropriate reviews and also turn the visibility on if it sounds good to your business. After stores and reviews, now we have products section. This is an essential part for every business segment. Before moving on products let's discuss the category first. To add the new category in a specific store, we need to select the store from the list of stores. You can click on the add button to create a category by entering the title and sort index. Under the specific category, you can also add the subcategory by clicking on the plus icon. This is all about the category section. Now let's move to the product section. Similar to the categories, we can add the products only after choosing the store from the list of stores. Here, you can add the products individually one by one and also upload the list of items in bulk using the .csv file. Let's see how you can create the product. We can click on the add button and fill the basic details like product images, title, price, discount, description, category, product variants, etc. After entering the product information now you can click on the create button to add the new product in a specific store. If you have the lots of products in the store then you can find it by search bar. You just need to enter the product name in the search bar and this will be visible on the top. Here, you can filter the products with the category, subcategory and active status. You can turn off the product visibility from this toggle button. Now your customers can't see the product item in a specific store on the app. After the products, we have promotions section. Promotions are basically coupons that you provide to the customers as discount. To add the new coupon, you can click on the plus icon and enter the details like title, coupon code, discount, description, store name on which coupon should be applied, and optional coupon limits. In the coupon limits, you can select the validity of the coupon, add the total limit, enter the usage limit, 
Add the maximum discount, minimum and maximum order amount for taking the benefit of coupon. You can filter the coupons according to the store name and active status. You can also turn off the visibility of the coupon from the app by toggle the availability status button. This is all about coupons. Let's come to the bulk notifications. Here you can send the bulk notification to all the customers by entering the title and description as subtitle. After the promotions, we have withdrawal section. This section contains two parts, stores and drivers. Both of these parts are dedicatedly focused on the earning. Delivery agents can raise a request to owner for getting their earned commission money using an app. After receiving the request from delivery partner you can approve or disapprove the request for payment. You can filter the store withdrawal requests according to the store names and acceptance status. Like drivers, store manager can send a request to you for getting the money he earned by selling the meat products online. Here owner can approve or disapprove the request sent by the vendors or store managers. You can filter the driver withdrawal request according to the driver names and acceptance status. After withdrawal, we have transactions segment. Here, you can see the list of all the transactions that processed recently. You can filter the transaction list according to the customer name and paid status. In the list view, you can find all the transactions with associated order it, payment method, customer name, amount and payment status. Under failed payments section, you can also track the list of failed payments that may came due to downtime of the banking servers or other network glitches. Now we have reports section. Here, we are providing five types of reports, commission report, daily sales report, monthly sales report, yearly sales report and product sales report. In commission report, you can find all the details related to the store, agent, own or admin earned commission. You can filter the commission according to the order status. You can also get the list of commission according to the date filter as well. For maintaining the account books, you can print and download this required report. In the same way, you can also see other sales report. After that we have setting section. In basic settings, you can upload the logo for email, business account and also add the details like currency symbol, phone number, email, project name, country code, WhatsApp number and distance unit etc. After adding the basic settings, you can add all the business social links like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube and Instagram etc. Here, you can simply click on the add button and enter the title and URL of the social link. In invoice settings, you can update the logo and enter the header, footer information to represent your business. Now, we have app settings, here you can add the iOS and Android app URL in the dashboard. These URLs will be visible on the Meet website. You can also enable or disable the settings for the delivery tip and requirement of sign-up name in the app. Here, you can see the settings for mobile app setup, you can upload the brand logo, app icon and color code for your app. Your online Meet app will be uploaded with the given logo, app icon and color code. After setting up the apps, here we have settings for document types. Being an owner you can add the document type according to the customer, manager, driver and store. This document type may includes driving license, vehicle registration certificate, food safety license, accidental insurance, and incorporation certificate etc. In order settings we have notifications. You can enable and disable the notifications for any event as per the business requirement for manager, customer and an admin. Here, you can click on any edit button and update the notification message according to the needs. Now we have settings section for cancel reasons, you can add the multiple cancel reason as per the business needs. You can also update and delete the existing cancel reasons for customer and manager. And last we have other settings in order section. Being an owner you can also set the amount for free delivery. For an example, if we are adding an amount of $100 here and our order value is $120 then delivery will be free. If amount is lesser than $100 then delivery charges will be taken according to the pricing rule. Here, you can turn off the visibility of stock button in products section using this product stock toggle button. If you will turn it off then you can't see the stock button in the products section. Apart from this, you can also enable or disable the maximum cash order and delivery OTP confirmation settings for an app. After that, we have delivery settings. In case we don't have any delivery agent whom are using our app to deliver the meat to customer doorstep then we can do it manually and disable the both of these settings. Now we can manage everything either using an admin panel or store manager app.
Now we have pricing rule. Here we can define our new rule that will be based on the either flat fare, distance and time based fare, and distance slot based fare. Let's discuss these rules in depth. In flat fare, you can enter any amount that will be fixed for delivery. For an example, we are putting the $10 here now it does not matter how much distance it will cover and how much time it will take. It will be same for each delivery no matter what the distance and time will be. In distance and time based fare, base fare will be taken with other charges like duration fee, distance fee and minimum fare. You can get the payment for the time taken for the delivery. For an example here, we can charge as $1 for per minute. Now we have distance fee, this will be the unit that we will enter in the basic settings. If we have the unit as km then we will enter the distance price for 1 km. At last we have minimum fare, to manage the profit margins, you can also set the minimum fare as per the business needs. This will be only countable if total amount of the base fare, duration fare and distance fare will be lesser than the minimum fare charges. In distance slot base fare, we can add multiple distance slots pricing. For an example, we are adding the cost $5 for 10 km and $7 for 15 km. Now if vehicle traveled the distance of more than 10 km then delivery charges will be according to the second slot. Here we have task allocation settings. Let's say you have 10 delivery agents, if any driver is busy and unable to accept the task then your task can be allocated to another one. Task will be reallocated to the number of persons whom are in the entered radius. Task available time feature will wait the acceptance of delivery agent up to the seconds we will enter here. You can expand the coverage of delivery agents by increasing the radius of allocation. At last we have a setting that will allocate the task to the last driver if driver limit is reached. For an example, if we have 5 retries here and this was the last reallocation then task will be assigned automatically to the fifth one. After that we have task actions, here you can give the permissions to your drivers for adding notes, images and signatures as electronic proof of delivery. If you will enable the settings, then automatically this feature will be added to the delivery agent app. At the end we have notifications in delivery settings, you can manage all the delivery event related notifications for the driver, customer, admin or owner. You can also update the notification messages as per your requirement. After the delivery settings we have store settings, in events, you can add the specific days on which you don't want to receive the orders. After adding the events on the specific dates, now customers can't see the time slots for delivery on those particular dates using the app and website. You can add the event by entering the title and date. Now, we have settings for time slots. In time slots, you can add and update multiple time slots for a specific day. Now your customer can choose only these time slots while making an order. Under time slot settings, you can also update the delivery day under these time slots will be visible to customers. For an example, if you are choosing tomorrow here, then customers could choose a time slot either for tomorrow or after that but not for today. Now we have tag settings, here you can manage the tags as per the store requirement. Customers can search and filter the stores according to these tags. After the store settings, we will discuss item settings. Here, you can find the variant types and bulk upload functionality. You can add the variant type, simply by clicking on add button. Now you can fill the details like title for variant, and its price. In price, you can see the options like none, additional and choice. If you will choose price of variant as none then it won't affect the overall cost of the product. But if you want to add the variant that may have different price tags, then you can choose the additional option. And being an owner of meat store, you can also give the choice to the customers for variants. You can also show or hide the visibility of variant types in app and website using this toggle button. After that we have bulk upload, instead of uploading products one by one you can upload the list of products with a single click. On the right side, you can see the sample CSV file for product upload. After deleting the demo data and adding the new product data, you can choose the CSV file. Here, you can choose any specific store in which you want to add the products. Now, you can click on the upload button to move the data from CSV to server. Below, we have option to download the product items according to the specific store. This will be useful when you want to update the product pricing or information for any specific store. After updating the product CSV file, now you can upload product details using this update button. Now, we will see how this payment settings section will work. Here, you can add the tax rate according to your country. 
You need to simply click on the Add button for adding the taxes with the title and percentage. In the wallet settings, we have referral points, cash back points, discount, store wallet and driver wallet. In referral points, if customers will share the meat delivery app with their friends, colleagues and relatives then they will get the friend referral points in their wallet. To improve the customer engagement, you can enter any number in the friend referral. You can also add the points for new user as well. These points will be reflected in the wallet of new user when they will sign up on an app using shared referral code. In the last, we have validation on order completion. If we will turn on this restrict on order completion toggle button then friend referral a new user will get the points on when the new user will complete the first order successfully. After that we have cashback points, you can enable or disable this feature on the demand of customer engagement. You can update the value of cashback per order and also the maximum limits of the points earned on per order. Now, we have discount section. Here you can enter the maximum discount and points conversion rate. For an example, we are entering 10 points per dollar. Using this if customers having 70 points then he is eligible only for the $7 discount on the next meet order. Using store wallet feature, you can give permission to the store manager or vendor to make the withdraw request. You can turn on or turn off the visibility of wallet feature in the vendor or store manager app. Functionality of driver wallet is similar to the store wallet but this is only for the delivery agents. After that we have content settings. Here, you can add the promotional banners for an online meet app and website. In FAQs section, you can manage the frequently asked questions for the customers, drivers, and store managers. This will help them to solve their queries during the unavailability of support team. For adding a new FAQ, you can simply click on the plus icon and fill the details like question, answer and FAQ type. This FAQ type can be related to the order, offers, account, etc. Being an owner, you can share the privacy policy, terms and conditions of an app or website with the customers. You can update these privacy policy, terms and condition anytime as per the business requirement. This is all about the content settings. Now we will discuss about website settings. In basic settings, you can add the brand logo, favicon, color code, title, description and header photo for a website. Here, you can add the impressive banners for a website to increase the user experience. Now we have homepage plugins, using this you can add multiple section in your homepage. Let's see how we can create a section for a homepage. For adding the new section we can click on the add button now this form will open. Here we can upload the image and enter the information like title, description, button title, button link and color etc. After filling the required information we can click on create button to show the new section in the website. Here, we have a process that tells how we can link the custom domain with the application server. Now we have geolocation settings, this is crucial part for the mobile app. In city section, you can add all the cities with their localities where you want to start the delivery services. Here, we can click on the add button and enter the city where you want to start the business operations. After creating the city, you can add the localities by clicking on plus icon. Here, you can fill the locality name, city name, and draw the boundary area for the locality. Now your customers can see only those butcher shops that lies within their area range. After the settings for geolocation, here we have notification settings. We won't discuss this at this moment, our support team will help you to configure notifications during the launch of Meet Delivery app. Here we have staff settings section. In staff settings, we have roles, staff members and branches. Let's discuss branch section first before moving on staff members and roles. In branches, you can find all of your Meet outlets. For adding the new outlet or store, you can click on the add button and fill the new branch name. Now we have staff members, you can see the list of all the staff members with associated branches. To add the new staff member, you can click on the create staff button and fill the details like name, email, password and branch where they are providing the services. After filling the details of new staff member we can click on create to get their name in the list. Now the time comes when we need to assign a role to them. Before assigning a role to them, you need to add it first. Here we already having two roles, you can also create the new one by simply entering the designation title. Roles is something that will empower your staff member to take the action whatever a permission you will give to them. In the same way, we have permission button here, you can give the permission to role whatever you want to give to them. 
And last we can assign the role to the specific staff member and then they can act according to the given role. You can assign a role to any member using this assign role button. After staff settings, you can also update the profile details of the admin panel. For updating the profile, you can click on top right corner image. Here you can click on the edit profile button and change the profile photo with the name. If you want to change the password, then you can simply click on change password button. And you can update the old password with a new password. So this is all about the working and functionality of the admin panel. Apart from these standard features, if you have unique requirements for an online meat business then you can reach us via an email at sales at or you can also contact us by call at the given numbers. Music